Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nally again. In this uh, video, I want to talk a little bit about um, measurement and error and uh, these two definitions of uh, reliability that we're, you're going to encounter as you're doing your experimental measurements. So, first off is this idea that all measurements contain error. Okay, This is one of the things that you have to kind of keep in mind right away at the very start is when you're making a measurement there's always an error associated with it the only times you don't have an error is when you're counting something okay so if I have five oranges in front of me and I want to know how many oranges I have I will just count one at a time right and the number five would be an exact number there's no error in that because I'm not making any measurement I'm just counting okay but when you're making a measurement let's say you want to know what is the mass of each of the orange then you're going to put it on a balance and once you make a measurement like that like putting the orange on a balance then there's all kinds of errors that could come in okay first off you can just have human imperfection when we're making measurement maybe when you're reading the balance you're making a misreading okay you might misread the balance you might have forgotten to tear the balance you might have forgotten to subtract the mass of the uh, initial mass before you put the orange in there's all kinds of error that uh, are made by the person making the measurement the second measurement is just the imperfection of the instrument that we use to make that measurement these are we can think of it as built-in errors for example in a instrument like the balance uh, because it's electronic a lot of times you have electronic noise which is just the uh, you know uh, just the unreliability of having a connection that requires you know electricity to be transmitted from one side to another and there's a lot of uh, uh, what we call noise that could come in as a result of that transmission of electricity so it's not perfect okay and as a result you have these errors that creep in when you're making any kind of measurement so we tend to categorize errors into two different types one type of error is what we refer to as systematic error a systematic error is basically an error that has a consistent source or a consistent magnitude, okay? And I'll talk about this accuracy precision uh, uh, concept uh, in, a, in a little bit. But right now, just understand that a systematic error has some kind of consistent source. So, for example, let's say you're talking about that measurement with the mass, okay? So let's go back to one of these uh, digital balances from one of our earlier slides. Uh, before you put this thing, uh, this you know, object on the digital balance, ideally you would have teared it first. Okay, you would have uh, teared it, which just means that resetting the balance to zero. But let's say you forget to do that. Okay, so if you let's say the mass of this uh, object is 47.6, if you tear it, if you start at zero. But let's say you forget to tear it, and the actual starting point wasn't zero, but it was point one or 0.5 okay 0.5 grams that means when you read this numbers off right it's not going to be 47.6 anymore it's going to be 47.6 plus 0.5 which is 48.36 but you didn't know you forgot you didn't know that you didn't tear it so then you might think that that 48.36 is the actual mass of this okay but if you were to forget to tear for all of these same different objects that you measure on this balance you just keep forgetting to tear all of them then you're going to get a mass that's always off by 0.5 grams because you forget to tear it then the starting mass is always 0.5 gram now that's what we refer to as a systematic error because the source is always the same it's because you forget to tear okay um, if you you know again forget to do something this is user's error right you forget to do uh, like te tearing the uh, balance or there's something sp uh, consistently wrong with the instrument that's the same way for example maybe one of the balances has a you know uh, they have to lie on a flat surface but let's say one of the balance is a little bit tilted and it's tilted the same way for all the measurements right so in that case you're gonna get a number that's slightly off and this con the source is consistent you can generally detect this after a while um, because you see that if you were to use an instrument that's correctly uh, set up then the numbers would be off and the, the, the numbers off by you know it's always off by a certain magnitude okay now a random error is a lot harder to detect because the a random error just by the definition of this uh, error is something that 
doesn't have a, con a consistent source or magnitude. So in other words, it's inconsistent. Okay. So that electronic noise that I was talking about earlier, you know, if in terms of a uh, uh, signal that's transmitted through wires, through electricity, you always have this error. And that error doesn't have a, a consistent magnitude every time. Okay. Another, another um, error that you might think about is same thing again, back to the balance is when you're looking at um, uh, this particular balance right here, the way this balance measures the mass is by sensing the pressure difference between you know the object that's putting the pressure on top of the uh, pan balance right here, the plate of the balance, okay? Now, assume you're, for example, consider maybe you're in a room that has a fan going on. The fan, because it generates wind, wind generates pressure, so the pressure is going to also exert uh, you know, change the number on the balance, and as a result, you might have numbers that are fluctuating. Okay, this often happens if we take the balance and put it inside the uh, fume hood in our laboratory. So we'll see the numbers fluctuating quite a bit because there's a change in pressure, con constant fluctuation of pressure in the fume hood. So the fluctuation is not going to be consistent because it's just depending, you know, the fan is not consistent, the wind uh, flow is not consistent, so the airflow is not consistent. So you're going to get numbers that are fluctuating wildly, and as a result, you're going to get some kind of an error every time you make a measurement. And that error is not going to be the same value every time, so it's random. Okay, so like I said, pressure and temperature changes, which is not consistent. Okay, now as a result, we have to have a way of measuring really how big our error is. Okay, so it's it's sort of like a, this is a, maybe a little hard to understand. Every time you measure, you have an error, but now you have to have a way of measuring your error too. You have to be you have to have a way of telling other people how big your error is in your measurement because the bigger the error the less reliable your measurement is and the less confident you are of your measurement. The smaller the error, the more confident you are of your measurement. So how do we measure reliability? How do we uh, tell other people how confident we are of our measurement? Well, there are two ways to do this. One is by accuracy, how accurate our measurement is. And the second is by precision, which is how precise our measurement is. Okay. So these are the two different ways we tell other people, tell other scientists, how reliable our measurement, in other words, our data is, okay? So measurement, you know, when we make a bunch of measurement, that's what we call our data, right? Okay, now accuracy. So accuracy is a measure of how close your measurement is to the actual value, which is something we call the true value, okay? So let's say, um, density of gold in one of the earlier videos I talk about density of gold it's 19.3 grams per cubic centimeter let's say you made a density type of experiment you were measuring mass and you were measuring volume and you get a number that's 19.1 whereas the actual value the true value is 19.3 so you know you have an error and you can quantify that error you can say well I'm off by a certain value and we'll talk about calculating this error in the next series of videos but I just want to give you that idea that if you're measuring something it's 19.1 and the actual value is supposed to be 19.3 then you're not accurate but you're not off by a whole lot imagine somebody who measures uh, these mass and volume and get a density of gold that's 21.2 grams per cubic centimeter that person would be have you know would have a much larger error in its act in his accuracy compared to your measurement okay so that's what accuracy measure it measures how close your result is to the true value now a lot of times as you'll see later when we talk about measurement we often are required to make a number of measurements of the same thing not just one measurement so for example when you want to make uh cal you know density uh measurement right or calculation of your density you'd probably be making the mass measurement several times and several times you're going to make the measurement of the volume as well and so you usually will be taking an average of those results and comparing the average to the true value but it's the same idea if you take that average compared to the true value and you have a difference then that's your error precision on the other hand is um, a little bit more complicated. It's also a measure of reliability, but it has two meanings. One is, 
if you're making a, a, a repeated measurement, right, a bunch of measurements, okay, the idea is how close are the repeated measurements to each other. Ideally, if I were to make, you know, if I were to try to determine the mass of an orange, right, and I put it every time, I keep me making that measurement 10 times, I should be able to get the same mass every time. But because of the concepts of the random error and the systematic error that I was talking about earlier, which is the error of the user, the person who's making the measurement, and the error that comes from noise, okay, the electronic noise or the pressure differences in the room, you might not get the same number every time. And the how close these numbers are to each other tells you how precise your measurement is. The second meaning of precision is how sensitive your instrument is, your measuring instrument is. And another way of saying this is just basically how many significant figures you have from an instrument. So you remember in the significant figure video earlier, I talked about the idea that in a beaker you only get, uh, you know, your certainty is only up to plus minus one milliliter, whereas in a graduate cylinder you get plus minus 0.1 milliliter. If you compare the same volume in but and making that measurement with the two different glasswares, you'll find that you get three significant digits from this uh, instrument, whereas you only get two significant digits from this one. That tells you that this instrument, the graduate cylinder, is more precise than the beaker. In 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 comparison, the burette is even more precise than graduate cylinder because you can get four significant figures from the burette measurement. Okay, so in the next video, I'll talk a little bit about how. Uh, we can look at accuracy and precision uh, for a given uh, type of measurement.